So let's take a look at one of the simplest CMOS pipelining methods we can use, which is input-output pipelining. So in this network, we have two registers. The two registers use the same clock. This is an assumption we will be making for almost all the circuits we deal with. Uh, this is the synchronicity as assumption, which means that the circuit is synchronous by virtue of all of its registers having the same clock. So this is an assumption we will make even if it is not stated. Now between the two registers, there are three combinational logic blocks, each given the symbol CLB. So CLB is an acronym for combinational logic block, which means that it is simply a combinational logic gate. Unless otherwise stated, we can always assume that these CLBs are made using static CMOS. So we have three of these CLBs in series with each other, three independent logic gates, each feeding its output to the input of the one next to it. Again, we don't have to assume that the lines we have drawn are single bit lines. These could have uh, multiple bits and the registers would also have multiple bits, which means that they consist of a parallel number of single bit registers uh, next to each other. Uh, we always have to maintain uh, the assumption that the clock signal is common for all the registers. And the question is, at this point, what is the uh, operating frequency of the clock or what is the clock period that we have to use? And so let's consider the clock signal and let's consider two consecutive active edges of the clock signal. So we have two consecutive active edges of the clock signal and we want to find the minimum amount of time we have to give between these two uh, active edges which would become the clock period T capital. So when the first clock edge comes, when this clock edge comes, when clock edge number one comes, data that was at the input of the first register R1 will then exit R1. So how much time goes between the active edge and the data exiting register R1? By definition, this is TCQ1. And so we have to allow an amount of time TCQ1 between the active edge and the output of register R1 being available at node X. So at this point, data is available at node X. So at node X, the data is an input to CLB1. Now, we want the data that exits CLB3 at node Z to be available before the next clock edge. So we have to allow time for the data at node X to pass through CLB1, CLB2, and CLB3. So we have to give enough time to allow for T propagation delay. What is T-propagation delay? It is whatever combinational delay or propagation delay exists between the two registers. In this case, the, two, the three logic blocks, CLB1, CLB2, and CLB3, are in cascade with each other, and therefore we add their uh, delays to uh, arrive at TPD. Now, if data is going to be registered properly at R2, it has to become available at Z, not at the clock edge, not at the next clock edge, but at least T set up to ahead of the clock edge. And therefore, T capital, the clock period, has to be greater than or equal TCQ. And TCQ is from register 1, allowing register 1 to produce its output, plus TPD, which in this case is T1 plus T2 plus T3, plus T set up 2. In general, we can assume that T setup and TCQ are the same for all registers. Uh, in this equation, we have written T setup 2 and TCQ 1 uh, just to point out that we are waiting for the output of the first register and we have to arrive at the input of the second register T setup time ahead of the active edge. Uh, and therefore, we have to take a, a deeper look uh, at TPD, which is T1 plus T2 plus T3. When we looked at a combinational delay in module 3, uh, we understood that each CMOS gate has multiple values for delay depending on the logic input that activates the transition at the output. Obviously, when we use T1 plus T2 plus T3, we will use the worst case delay for each of them because we have to ensure that data is available at Z 
in the worst case. When we ensure that, then data will also be available at Z in the best case. But it's not true in the opposite. If we assume that we only have to wait for the best case, the worst case will not be ready uh, at the input of R2. So let's look at a pipeline that's a little bit uh, more complicated, um, although actually it's pretty much the same thing. So here we have a bunch of registers, um, 10 registers, and um, between each pair of registers, uh, there, are, there are combinational logic blocks. We again assume that all the registers use the same clock signal, so it's a unified clock signal. And now we have, between each pair of register, a different combination of logic blocks, of combinational logic blocks. So what do we call whatever logic we see between the two registers? Whatever, what do we call this, and what do we call this, and so on? We call each of them a path. So a path is a specific combinational path between two registers. So um, we will call these path one through path five. And path is defined as a possible path between two registers. Now let's try to find out the uh, uh, clock period of, uh, of uh, the clock in this case. So if we look at path one and the two registers for path one, we can apply the same equation for clock period, T capital is greater than or equal, T setup plus T CQ, plus we'll call it T combinational. T combinational is the delay of whatever combinational path exists between the two registers. Now, for the first pair of registers, we will use T1 greater than or equal T setup plus TCQ plus TCLB1 plus TCLB2. And for T2, we will use T2 greater than T setup plus TCQ plus T, com T combinational block 3. For T3, we will use greater than T setup plus TCQ. And here we are making uh, use of the fact that setup time and TCQ time are the same for, for all registers. So we are going to make use of this assumption, which is a very reasonable assumption and a very fair assumption to simplify our solutions. And so we will write the uh, clock periods for all the, the, the five different paths. Now, this is a synchronous circuit and therefore there can only be a single clock. So we cannot assume that there are five clock periods and we have to use one clock period out of these five. And so, of course, we will use the greater of the five clock periods. And therefore, our T, our actual clock signal, is going to be T setup plus TCQ, because these two components of delay exist in all the, uh, in all the inequalities we wrote, plus whatever is the maximum of the combinational delay. So the maximum of T1 plus T2 or T3 or T4 plus T5 plus T6 or T7 plus T8 or T9. So we have reached a really important conclusion, which is that what dominates and what defines the clock signal, what defines the clock period of the circuit is not T setup or TCQ, what dominates and defines it is the combinational delay of the path between register pairs. And so what is the um, most important path in this circuit? It's definitely the path with the greatest combinational delay. So what do we call the path with the greatest combinational delay? We call it the critical path. And defining the critical path is the most important aspect of CMOS design. It is the most critical point about the design because it defines the operating frequency. What this equation will tell us is what is the maximum, uh, the minimum clock period we have to use, which would be the maximum operating frequency that this pipeline can operate at. And this is the most important metric that a design produces. This is what you work towards. And therefore, knowing the critical path is extremely important because it tells you uh, what um, is keeping your circuit from working faster. Which path is keeping your circuit from wo working faster? So let's just assume that path 4, for example, is the critical, critical path. So path 4 is going to finish, basically, if we use T4 as our clock period, then path 4 is going to finish barely T setup, exactly T setup before the clock edge, and thus it's...
um, input to the second register will be registered properly, but only barely so. Everyone else is going to finish a little earlier. So is that a problem or is that okay? No, that's okay because they finish earlier and they will not change. They will remain stable at the inputs of their registers until the clock edge comes, which is fine because T-setup is defined as a minimum amount of time before the clock edge, not an exact amount of time. Why would the outputs of each of the non-critical path not change after they arrive? Because their inputs will not change because there hasn't been a new clock edge and therefore there haven't been new inputs to these paths. Again, when we talk about T1, T2, all the way up to T9, we are talking about the worst case delays for each of these combinational logic blocks. So the critical path is basically the worst of the worst. It's giving us the worst case of the worst case.